today I wanted to introduce a competition that we're running on the uh, the YouTube channel. Um, so the, the competition prize, effectively, at the end of it, is that you're going to get a uh, QNAP TS-464 NAS, the one that's on screen here, um, as well as four 2 terabyte uh, Seagate Ironwolf drives. Um, I'm going to go through a little demonstration of the unit um, in operation. I'm not going to do a full setup. Um, I've already set up a little environment. Um, we do have other videos on the channel that show a full setup from scratch of this NAS. Um, but with the TS-464, it comes with uh, four gig of RAM as standard. Um, so this is the exact chassis that you're going to see. And exactly what I'm going to demo later is exactly what you're going to win. Um, I have the, the same default four gig of RAM in my unit. I've got the same four two terabyte drives. And I've just uh, given you a little showcase of uh, what the NAS can do with that sort of spec. Um, so a quick rundown of some highlights. It's got a 4-core, uh, 4-thread four four Intel Celeron CPU that bursts up to 2.9 gigahertz. It's got 4 gigs of DDR4 RAM um, in the form of one 4-gig module. Uh, but you can take it up to 16-gig maximum if you put two 8-gig modules in there as well. Um, it's got two M.2 uh, uh, PCIe uh, Gen 3x1 slots. So if you wanted to put some SSDs, uh, they can go inside. Um, no extra cards to buy um, to fit them in. The slots are built right in. Um, you access those through the drive bays themselves. So if you take out the four hard drives, uh, you can see the RAM and the M.2 slots in there. Um, and it's got two 2.5 gig um, Ethernet ports that uh, are also backwards compatible uh, to one gig. <laughs> Top of all that, we do have a PCIe uh, Gen 3 by 2 slot in the back as well. So if you wanted to add a PCI Express card, perhaps for uh, something like 10 gig Ethernet, more 2.5 gig ports, things like that, it does have the two slots on the back to do that as well. Um, so to go straight through to uh, sort of demonstration of the unit, so here's one that I've got set up with a few select apps on it. Um, if I look at the control panel, I'll show you the one I've got here. So if I come in here to system status, we'll get a rundown. So it's a TS-464. Uh, um, I've only got the 4 gig uh, RAM in there. I don't have any extra, just a single module. Um, so if I go to the hardware information, we can see we've got the four disks installed here. I've got no M.2s in it. I've just got what you're winning as part of the, uh, the competition here. Um, so what we can see here is I do have um, a few different apps running. Um, so on this NAS, I do have Container Station running, um, QVR Elite for um, recording a couple of cameras, um, and I've also got Virtualization Station uh, running a virtual machine. Um, so if I run through those, those in order, uh, so here with Container Station, um, I do have a, a container running that's running um, a, a copy of uh, Pi-hole effectively, so I can go um, access that. I believe that's on 10.10.20.30. I think that's where I put it. There we go. Uh, so in here I do have um, Pi-hole running. I can log in and see the status and see other information about it. Uh, so here's Pi-hole running. So I've got a couple of clients connected through this Pi-hole right now. Uh, one of the clients is actually running on the NAS itself. Uh, so if I go back to, to the NAS itself, one of the clients I've got running is in Virtualization Station. Uh, so in Virtualization Station here, I've got a uh, copy of Ubuntu running. So if I open that up, um, I can come in here. So I've got the latest copy of uh, Ubuntu running here. Um, so this is running as a uh, virtual machine running inside the NAS. Um, nice and snappy, so you can click around and do things. Um, so it's got a you know web browser to open up. So anything that uh, the web browser is opening or viewing here um, is all going to be going through uh, this pie hole here. So any uh, requests that are happening. Um, it's going through the pile, which is a DNS filter effectively. Um, it blocks advertisements and things like that um, by using a, uh, a blacklist and a whitelist. So if it's a known um, pop-up company, online advertiser, malware, something like that. Um, it's going to block them at the DNS level so they can't be accessed. So that's what uh, the Pi Hall is doing. And as I say, this is running um, on the NAS itself. But here in uh, Virtualization Station, we've got some um, different things that you can, you can do uh, with different virtual machines. So I'm just running a, a Linux virtual machine. Uh, you could, of course, run anything else like uh, a Windows VM, something like that. Uh, might want a bit more around to run the, the latest Windows um, operating systems. But this is running on the NAS as well. Uh, so if I come out of there, we can see uh, that I do have that running. I've allocated one gig of RAM to that. 
and the containers use very little RAM. Uh, just to give you a picture of the resources I'm using here. Uh, so with the container running, with the virtualization running and recording two cameras at the same time, uh, the CPU is sitting fairly respectively. I do see it surging up to about 25% a couple of times there. Um, the RAM sitting at just 76% uh, use, so I could have perhaps given some more RAM to the virtual machine there. I've got a little bit more to spare. Um, so how I've got the storage set up here, if we go look at that, so in the uh, storage and snapshot, we can see I've got uh, drives in bays one, two, three, and four. So if I go check those out, um, again, these are Seagate Ironwolf drives at two terabytes each. Um, and I've got four of them in a RAID 5 here. Uh, so we can see here that the uh, the Seagate drives are there. So, um, you know, the usual thing with the, the Iron Wolf drives, um, they're optimized for NAS. Uh, they're, they're designed to be always on, uh, always accessible, 24-7 uh, usage. So you can get your data anytime, anywhere. Um, they're all CMR as well. So um, there was something negative in the press a while ago about um, SMR drives. These are all CMR um, and they are available up to 12 terabytes for the regular Ironwolf range. Um, they do offer bigger capacities in the Ironwolf Pros. Um, and uh, for the uh, the larger ones, I think six terabytes and higher, you also get um, Ironwolf, Ironwolf Health Management. Um, on the, uh, the smaller twos here, it's not supported, but you can get it on the larger ones. It doesn't mean you can't get health information about the drive. You can click on the disk health uh, option here and it'll give you a summary of everything. You've still got the smart information, so we can see here everything's listed as good, so nice healthy drives. Um, so yeah, nice nice high, high performance drives um, that we've got in this unit. So I've got four of those connected. And if I go look at the storage and snapshots um, in a RAID 5, um, it's showing that I've got uh, about 5.43 terabytes of capacity. If I go to manage that, we can see that it's, uh, it's in a RAID 5 there. Uh, with all four discs so that's what I've got set up here on uh, on my unit uh, right now. Uh, one of the other applications I do have running is QVR Elite uh, which is our surveillance software. Um, so with QVR Elite you get uh, two free camera licenses and um, completely unlimited uh, recording with that so if, if I go here look at the recording storage so I allocated I think it was 500 gigabytes of capacity uh, for my camera recording so we can see that they're recording over here so that's a 500 gig volume that I've uh, created uh, specifically for that so they're recording uh, into my main space there uh, so if I close out of that come into the camera settings we can see that I've got uh, two cameras added in there uh, so one for my back garden one for my front garden so they're recording uh, the software that you would use to um, view those cameras is called uh, QVR Pro so I can drag that software in here Oh, the uh, login box stayed on my other page one second while I just log in. So if I log in first and then I'll drag it in. There we go. So with, uh, with the QVR Pro client here, we've got uh, a connection to QVR Elite. We can see the two cameras that I have here. Um, now, before I click on them, do apologize. I've got uh, a lot of building work going on, so there's a bit of mess. Uh, but here, if we go look at the, uh, the back garden view, uh, we can see uh, that's working absolutely perfectly. Uh, we've got a separate view here. We can look at the front garden. Again, some building waste out the front. Uh, but if you want to create a view of both cameras, you can just simply drag another camera in. Um, if you don't want them side by side, it's very easy. You can just drag one below the other and it will adjust. And you can see up here, there's an untitled view. Uh, so if you want to save this as a view, you could say, click the save option. It wants a name. So in this case, I'll just call it all cameras because it is all the cameras that I've got connected. Uh, so now I have a view of all cameras. So if I was ever to click off to a single camera, if I want to go back to the exact view and layout I had before, I can just double click that view and it will go back and connect to that view. Um, so right now it's in the live view, but I can click down here to the playback and go back in time and see uh, what else I've got recorded on those. Uh, but that's how the uh, QVR Pro clients uh, are operating on this. But with, even with all that uh, happening on the NAS at once, it's a very capable NAS. Uh, you can also run things like uh, Plex Media Server on there. Um, it does have a, a HDMI out on this NAS as well, so you could even interact with the media directly on the HDMI out. Uh, but if you wanted to use it for a Plex Media Server, because this CPU does have um, an onboard GPU, um, so the Intel UHD graphics um, that is supported by Plex, uh, you're able to do um, hardware transcoding items with Plex as well. So if you wanted to use Plex to do this, um, you could use that. And if you've got a Plex pass, uh, you can enable the hardware transcoding feature uh, to, to watch your media as well. Um, so it's a it's very, very capable NAS. Um, lots of different options, especially with being able to add 
um, SSDs directly um, into the M.2 slots that are included. Uh, you can of course use SSDs in the drive bays as well. Uh, the four three and a half inch bays uh, will work with two and a half inch drives as well. Um, so how do you win all of this? So basically um, down in the uh, the the comment section, uh, the, the, sorry, the video information section down below, you'll find all the information you need. Um, there's a link to enter the competition. Uh, we'll basically need your name, um, email address, uh, your postal address, as well as what the NAS is used for. Um, so the uh, the winning um, person is going to win based off um, the, the best use case for the NAS. Um, so it's not going to necessarily be a, a draw at random. It's going to be who writes the best thing in what the NAS is going to be used for. So if you're going to use it for using it with Plex, uh, uh, recording cameras, virtual machines, things like that, write down what you're going to use it for. And that's how we're going to select um, uh, the, the the winning entry, if you like, uh, to the competition. Um, all information is down below as to when the competition is open, when it closes, when the winner's drawn. Um, this is open to all regions, so it's not limited to just the UK. So although this is the uh, QNAP UK YouTube channel, it is open to all regions. So anybody that wants to uh, to enter the competition can please do so. Um, and again, all information as well as the link to enter um, is in the uh, the video description down below. Um, if anybody has any questions, comments, uh, please do leave them down below. We'll get back to you as quick as possible. Um, but again, you're going to win a TS-464 NAS and four Seagate Ironwolf 2TB hard drives. Um, exactly like I've shown you here, the exact um, uh, setup that I have um, with this unit. So 4 gig of RAM, 4 2TB hard drives um, and uh, the TS-464. All right. Thanks a lot for, for watching and good luck with the competition. Thank you.